What's going on, everybody? Oh my god, it's Tuesday, and we're having a show. Of course, it's because I'm going on vacation, and uh, Artie can't do this without me, because he loves me too much, and he said, let's just do it Tuesday, bro, and we'll put it out, and then we'll have a nice little break, and we'll come back the following Friday rocking and rolling. So I hope everybody's having a wonderful, wonderful time. Um, everybody's being safe and staying out of trouble. But uh, like I said, I can't do anything. He can't do anything without me, and I can't do anything without him. He's the one, the only, the professor, Mr. Casas. How you doing, buddy? What's up? How are we, how are we hanging? We're hanging long and slightly to the left, but it's okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, with age. It, it does, right? It does happen with age, I guess. Um, so we're having a special edition. I don't call it special. It's a regular show, just a couple days early, just because I'll be... Um, going on vacation for about a week, um, and we'll be back to our regularly scheduled Friday nights uh, starting next week in July, I guess. Burp. I just burped. Uh, as always, guys, there's a three-drink minimum. Artie, do you have your drink with you? Ooh, I do. Uh, cheers, my brother. Cheers. I mean, nothing major. A little Malibu with some Coke. Oh, there you go. I just got a, little, a couple of Modellos. Um, I snuck them out of the uh, the... The pack we're taking to the river tomorrow. Um, so, I gotta sh- sh- keep them on the hush. <laughs> uh, um, a lot of things have happened. Reserves, huh? it's a, it, I dipped into the reserves. A lot of things has happened, Artie. It finally fucking happened. Almost. MLB <laughs> <laughs> baseball is back. Kind of. Uh, Robert Manfred is implementing a schedule for the 2020 season. The MLBPA has informed the Major League Baseball that they are, have rejected the agreement developed by Manfred and Tony Clark, the MLBPA um, uh, commissioner, or whatever they call him, the president of the MLBPA. Uh, some of the things that were on the the agreement were the universal DH for the next two years, guaranteed $25 million in playoff pools in 2020, Thirty-three million in forgiven salary advances that would increase the take-home pay of sixty-one percent of the MLB players. Overall earnings for players of one hundred and four percent of prorated salary. Over the last few days, of MLB agreed to remove the expanded postseason in twenty twenty-one in order to address player concerns. In the rejection. MLB clubs have unanimously voted to proceed with the 2020 season under the terms of the March 26th agreement. Players are to report to camp by July 1st. God damn, it took forever. And the season should begin at the end of July. Players to respond by 623 at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. As far as all I've seen so far, it's happening. They're going to show up. I know there's a couple people that are talking about sitting out. People are asking other uh, 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 MLB, MLB players if they're going to sit out, what's going to happen with the season. The only thing I don't like about the um, the agreement from March is that there won't be an expanded playoffs in 2020 or 2021. They took that out, which kind of sucks because with 60 games, we've talked about this before already, and, and forgive me if I'm wrong, but – Every game matters that much more. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. Riveting information from Artie on that one. Oh, I guess. I'm just trying to practice everything <laughs> you're saying, and I, I'm wondering like how up to date because I'm constantly reading stuff, right? Yeah. Oh, um, gist of what I just heard you say is basically they agreed to the original terms, so everything that they went through for nothing, they're just going back to square one, right? Or yeah. am I wrong? Or am I missing something? Or yes and no. So basically, they're 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 cutting out the extended uh, expanded postseason. Um, they remove the ability to file a grievance. So now oh, the players right. can file a grievance. Um, this is going to roll over into the collective bargaining agreement that's going to happen at the end of next season. God forbid there be a freaking strike, and ugh, I don't even want to think about that right now. I mean, it's it's just goddamn time this got done, man. But it does honestly leave a bad taste in my mouth that it took this long for this same shit that was agreed upon in March to just fucking happen. Yeah, to get going. You know what I mean? Um, like, it, it's absolutely... And I, honestly, I get it. Like, right now, there's been some COVID scares, and a couple people have, have popped positive. No information on who's gotten actually, like, really sick or anything like that. They may be all asymptomatic, but there have been players, including in the Phillies, that have gotten um, 
pop positive for COVID. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, to- yeah, I just don't, I don't see, I don't see what, what, what took so damn long to get back to square one, basically, you know, like, yeah. just, I, that's just, to me, mind boggling, but I mean, it's here. So, you know, they're supposed to report by first, you know, there's going to be players that don't, that don't report, which makes sense. You know, it's only 60 games, so it's not like they're missing a ton. I'm curious to know what what happens if they don't report. You know, are they still next year under the same contract that they're on right now? Like, to become free agents next year because they didn't report. Obviously, they're not going to get paid, right? If right. They don't so my understanding from what I've heard, and out there, correct us if we're wrong. If they do not report, they don't get paid for the season. However, it does count against them. So let's just say Mookie Betts doesn't report in. He wouldn't get paid. But he would be a free agent at the end of the season. If you don't report in for your your team and you're still under contract, you don't get paid. However, it does count against your year um, with the team, and you go into your next season starting regular as as it would be. That's interesting. That is very interesting, sir. It'd be interesting to see. It'd be interesting to see if anybody um, was removed from the from the team. Um, because they didn't show up to play. I mean, it'd be very interesting to see if anybody actually went down that road and said, you know what, man, we're going to let you go. You didn't show up when we need you to show up, but we're going to let you go. Yeah. Maybe that's where they could file a grievance though, no? Yes. So that still allows them to file a grievance, um, but we'll see how far that goes. I mean, yeah. I think if, if enough players start filing a grievance, I think it's going to just drop right into a, a strike and – we may not see baseball in 2022. Uh, I mean, to worry about 2021, I still well, skeptical it's, until it's official. Like, I know they're working on it, but, man, they've been working on it for a month and a half. So I'm waiting to see how everything plays out, you know? Now, I'm excited that we have some dates at least set and say, hey, July 1st, everybody's supposed to report. July 26th, 26, I believe I 26th saw. and 27th is opening weekend, yeah. basically. Um, one one set of teams will play the 26th. The other set of teams will play the 27th. I mean, I, I, 60 games in 68 days. It's going to be a fucking sprint, as uh, Ken Rosenthal said. Um, I, I added a little bit of colorful language, but 60 games in 68 days. I'm fucking ready. My body is ready, and my beers are ready. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you just need to get a couple days off, right, so that you could watch Oh, absolutely. Oh, my God. I'm going to be watching this shit at work. I don't give <laughs> <laughs> that's funny um i'm supposed to be going back to work right when that stuff happens you know yeah um what was i gonna tell you that that um oh man i lost the train of thought there well, what what let me ask you a question already what are your thoughts on on this whole situation where does this leave baseball because i know every other professional sport was able to find a way to 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 make their sports happen again Basketball, I mean, obviously it's got a, a couple uh, speed bumps because of other issues going on in the world right now. Not necessarily COVID, um, but some players are already saying, hey, we're not going to we're not going to play. We're not going to be there for different reasons. Um, I know we'll talk about that a little bit later. But where does that leave? I mean, cause to me, it has left a bad taste in my mouth. Like, I'm really disappointed that baseball got to where this is right now. I think of all the sports, baseball players are paid more per capita than any other sport. Right. I'm curious to see where, where that leaves us, right? It really does, man. Like, like I hope it wasn't just a money thing. I hope there was some more behind the scenes that we didn't get to hear about. I hope there was more behind the scenes that we, we don't know about, right, that they were more concerned with, and it wasn't just a money grab kind of thing. Because hey, that... Man. That that so. that really that I mean this whole situation really hurt the casual fan. It really hurt the diehard fans. The diehard, I mean I saw dude, I don't know how many people I saw today rocking their Angels jerseys, their Dodgers jerseys, everybody's fucking high five fist bumping, not high five, fist bumping around work um uh, as far as the customers go because they were excited cuz they're like, "Oh, hey, you like baseball too." Like, "Yeah, you know what I mean?" Um, I even wore one of my one of my angel shirts uh, today at work, and and I had a couple people like, "Hey man, you're rocking the angels." Huh? I'm like, "Hey dude, we got baseball is back, brother." Yeah. Um, but it's 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 gonna be interesting to see where this leaves us as far as the casual fan and where who who's really, you know, not gonna stick around for this. You know, it 
They could have been the first ones back the whole two, three weeks with nothing else right, but right. baseball. Sure. And sure. instead, fighting back and forth, back, fighting back and forth. And what, is ha- what happens now? We're back to square one with 60 games only. And like, could have had like 120, 100 even. Yeah, you could have had more fans. You could have drawn a, 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 a bigger crowd. I mean, it's just bigger uh, crowd that just not that might not have been there because you know, like, you might have been able to draw some of those basketball fans that are only basketball fans, and we're, we're like, man, we're just they need something. for sports. I'll, I'll watch baseball. You know, like <laughs> now, really, if you think about it, they're starting at the same time as basketball. So that yeah. that kind of, that fan base that you could have like maybe lured you or have swooped in on. One, yeah, it's now going to be gone if everything goes along with the way it's supposed to with uh, basketball. Does that make, make sense? Like yeah. before, you know, a center of sports could have been baseball and they could have capitalized. Instead, they just turned it into like this ugly thing, like a little feud, and it looked petty it amongst re- themselves. It you? reminds me of this this uh, video I saw from ESPN. They put it out, and they said of all the millions of times that um, the fans have bailed out baseball and forgiven them, maybe this time the fans don't. Because they could have been the center of attention. Baseball could have been America's sport again, America's pastime for real. Because everybody would have been watching. Look at the right. UFC. Look at NASCAR. Look at everything going on. Like the few things that we have gotten, everybody's watching it because that's all that's there. And they could have had the 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 um, they could have been the one. They could have been the ones. And I think. I don't know, man. They might lose a lot of people that that were hanging on for them, and and they're just like, I got other stuff I could do now, you know. Like these right. guys wanted to fight over some money, and and now we can go do something else. Right. Yeah, that totally makes sense. I mean, yeah, I just think they they had an opportunity there that they squandered. But I mean, let's just be happy with what we got. And um, I mean, I'll I'll, and- I'll gladly <laughs> take my sixty games in sixty eight days and. Um, what you know? What somebody somebody mentioned it. I, I was reading it earlier. They were like, okay, so re- realistically, after the first month, after the first four weeks of the season, you pretty much know who's going to be in the playoffs since it's not expanded playoffs. You pretty much know who's going to be in the playoffs, um, and so our team's going to be like, um, our team's going to be like, eh, I'm going to go sit out now. My back kind of hurts now. My I gotta, I gotta, you know, check out my hammy because, uh, you know what I mean. Are we gonna lose some of that competitive, you know, thing? Because usually it's a, it's a, um, not a sprint, but it, usually it's a marathon. You 162 games, and and right now we're looking at a, a quick sprint. So what yeah. do you think? Are you think some of the guys are just gonna kind of like, not almost say uh, fake no, injuries, I, but they're kind of kind of sandbag it if they're if it looks like they're gonna be out after 30. You know, let's just call it okay. Let's let's call it 30 game after 30 games. If there's a team that's you know, five and twenty-five. You know, you think those players are going to kind of sand dog it after that? You think they're going to give it all? I think they're going to give it their all. If you ask me, because um, that's one that I could see like them saying, "Yeah, it's only sixty games." You know, like that's that's what a third of the season. Yeah, usually that's a third of the season right there. And most times, dudes struggle to finish that you know uh, season. So now, sixty games for them might be like, ah, man, it's just a little more than spring training. You know? Yeah. I, I don't think that's going to be an issue for them at all. I just think it, I'm just curious to see. I, I really have to, not all the dudes are going to show up, you know? Yeah. Like just not a lot of, I, I saw an interesting stat. Let me read it to you real quick. Uh, 528 players, right? Mm-hmm. There's 528 players. Uh, 42% of players will be paid less than 100 k that, and the rest of MLB is 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 foregoing thirty three million salary forgiveness on the table, considering one hundred seventy million advanced players in March. So basically, forty two percent of players are getting paid less than a hundred k. Yeah, because they got they took that advance at the beginning of the season because they didn't know how long this was going to be. All right, and so, so now they're, they're they. It's almost like if they want sympathy. Yeah, this, you know, like you got paid ahead and of time, bro, and then now you're complaining, and now you're complaining because you got your money first, but then you want more money now, but you already got paid because they figured that was gonna happen, but you want more right. money now because you, why, you know what I mean? 
Get paid for your get, get paid for your sixty games. That's what you wanted to do. You get sixty games worth of money. And that's it. Minus minus what's already that, been advanced. Forty eight percent, dude. That's almost half of the league. Imagine if those dudes that say, you know what, it's just not worth it. That's half of the league, dude. Basically half of the league. Forty eight percent. Yeah, half of the league. If they decided to say, you know what, it's just not worth it. I'm not gonna go. So that to me is real a really interesting scenario. Now again, they're they're doing the boohoo poor me type of thing, and think about this. I always think of like the memes. You know, there's always memes circulating everywhere. Yeah. Have you ever seen the meme where like um, where there's a it's like a limo and it's a teacher in the limo, and then there's like a professional basketball player and and they're like looking at the teacher in the limo and saying, "Man, I wish I could have become a teacher. They they make so much money, blah blah blah. Yeah, but it takes a lot of work." Type of thing. And I'm just throwing the teacher on out there because obviously I see a lot of that stuff from teaching. Right. But I think that's the first thing that came into my head in terms of when I saw somebody say 100K because 100K is generally like I guess um, the standard that most people are trying to make in a, in a, as a living. You know, like the. I, most, I, I think most to live to like live it. comfortably, you you need to be in a household where they're ma- you're making at least a hundred thousand dollars. Right. Well, seeing them that they're complaining, I guess, is the thing I, I can't think of a better word to say that they're complaining about 100K. It's like, man, most of us are still trying to make 100 grand. Yeah, I, kn- I know that in my household right now, we're just under 100 grand a year. And yeah. that's, you know, me busting my ass and, and her getting her work done. I mean, that's just kind of where we're at right now. We're just under 100K. And I know that once we hit that 100K, things are going to be a little bit easier, but still. Like, how are you going to complain? You're out there playing a game, and you're making over 100k for a few months of work, and you can't just get out there and play a game. Like, it goes back to back in the day when we were talked about uh, was it Blake Snell? I'm like, dude, like, really, bro? You're you're gonna be you're gonna be like that about your money like that? Like, come on. I mean, granted, we don't know his situation. We don't know his problems. More money, more problems, as they said. And, you know, fucking Biggie Smalls back in the day. You know. Um, who knows? But at the same day, our us blue collar workers or white collar workers, even like, bro, come on, you're making 100k. Shit, I wish I was getting paid 100k a year to work six months, and then rehab and exercise and spend time with my family for another six months. You know, what I mean? totally you know what I mean? Let me let me ask you this, Artie. I know I know we gotta take a quick break right now. Let me ask you this, Artie. Over under games needed to be won to make the playoffs this season. How many do you think? What's your over under? Mm, thirty five. Thirty five. Thirty five games to make the playoffs. Yeah, I think thirty five will give you a shot at making the playoffs. I don't know the exact number, but I'm going to say thirty five. If you if you hit the benchmark of thirty five wins in a year, you're going to have a pretty good shot at making the playoffs. Right. So you're saying just over fifty percent. So you're saying fifty five percent. You need to be at at thirty five games to get into the playoffs this season. Right. I was thinking closer to forty. I was going about. I was going about thirty. I was going to meet you about halfway. Fifty eight percent. No, that's right. Fifty eight. I was going to go. I was going to go with uh, thirty eight. Yeah. I think if you about if you 30. nail if you nail thirty eight games, you're definitely in the playoffs. Oh, well, if you hit forty, you're going to be in the playoffs. Oh, absolutely. Are you saying like to, I said to give yourself a shot, you need thirty five. What do you th- okay? But, but so, if you're if you're at forty, you're in the playoffs. If you if you're at thirty eight, you got you in the playoffs. Uh, depends. You in the American League, you know, like. <laughs> well, since I mean, wait, are, are they doing? Are they doing the? Uh, I don't remember if I saw. Oh yeah, the Universal DH is happening for this year and next year. Yeah. So it doesn't matter, American League or National League. It does because they are they gonna split the leagues or is everybody playing everybody? That they haven't announced. Yeah, I'm curious to see because remember how they were early on they were talking about like so, yeah, split. oh we're gonna have the cactus league we're gonna have the grapefruit league blah 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 whatever it is um, I'm assuming because I haven't heard anything it's gonna be American League National League yeah it'll be it'll be I believe the American League has weaker weaker um, oh, records I, I could be wrong but I last year they we have the bigger record. bats we have bigger bats you have stronger we just arms. have more bats big guy. That's what I'm saying. We got bigger bats, and you got stronger arms. You have bigger bats, you have more bats. There's bruh, a difference, bro. There is a difference. I'm trying to give you a goddamn compliment. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> the million home runs last year. It was uh, this morning. It was uh, Peter Alonso. Was it Peter Alonso? I don't know who it was, man. 
So, moving on, we got to talk about NASCAR. I know, mm. I know, I know. We got to talk about NASCAR. A noose was found in Bubba Wallace's garage at Talladega. It was a secure area where access to the area is limited to competitors, officials, and official track staff. Let me repeat that. It is an area where access to was limited to competitors, officials, and official track staff. On the, on, on the heels of what NASCAR has tried to accomplish by undisputedly removing the Confederate flag from all NASCAR events, both on track and away from it. It's absolutely crazy that that happened. And in an update, I, I, I texted you earlier, um, the FBI, and now I'm not, okay, now I'm not one for conspiracy theories. I'm not one that says, you know, maybe, you know, it is what it is. Um, but my thing is, is it a cover-up? The, does the, is this where the cover-up begins? Because the FBI has came out and said that that noose has been there since October of last year. My spidey sense is tingling. Because how are you going to tell me that that's been sitting there, hanging up, since October of last fucking year? And it just so happens to be Bubba's fucking uh, a garage. Oh, they said, oh, nobody knew it was going to be his garage. Back in uh, in October of nineteen, you can t- tell me between October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. Eight months later, nobody's ever walked into that freaking thing. You're gonna tell me that nobody walked in there when they were cleaning. Nobody walked in there when they drove his car in there. Nobody walked in there when they were putting their stuff in there. Nobody walked in there and noticed there was a fucking noose there since October of last year. And the FBI is gonna want you to believe that shit. I'm not one for conspiracy theories, Artie, but what the fuck? Uh, I do believe in conspiracy theories when it comes to the government. I don't believe in the actual theories that are out there, but I leave there. I do believe there are conspiracies out there. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, here's my thing: if the FBI found that it was, it's been there since October. This has to be a cover. Somebody high up enough called somebody high up enough and said, "Hey, man, let's get rid of this." What are they gonna do though? Like, get rid of what? Like. Get rid of the situation. Like, oh, no, it's it's been there since October. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, bitch, what? With all the coronavirus shit going on, you're going to tell me that a cleaning crew didn't go through all these fucking garages and nobody was like, hey, what's that there? Why why is there a fucking noose hanging in the middle of the garage? Does anybody want to look at that? Anybody want to maybe call somebody about that? Like, maybe take it down? No? No? And it just so happens, it just so fucking happens that fucking garage number four is Bubba's this past weekend. On the heels of what they did by removing the Confederate flag from NASCAR, both on the track and away from it, you're going to tell me that the FBI found that it was just there since October and they have video proof that it's been sitting there since October. Who the fuck let something like that sit there since October? I don't know. I think Donald Trump is the one leading the investigation, if you ask me. It sounds like uh, he's the one. <laughs> you know, this is just fake news. It's been there since October. Everybody's making a fuss over nothing. I actually think they're, they they made themselves look worse by saying, hey, it's been there since October. It's like, what? What'd you say? Like, are, are, you, are you kidding? Like, um, your excuse is that it's been there since October, so no malicious intent. Who the fuck was there in October uh, that put that up there? So my guess is I don't think that really does anything other than I think it causes the FBI to not look into it more. Like, all right, we're just not going to look into it more. But I think it makes them look, it makes NASCAR, wherever it is, look worse by doing that. Yeah. I saw NASCAR look amazing when they walked Bubba's car. They pushed it across the, the pit row. Um, Richard Petty was there. All of NASCAR. You've seen the pictures, I'm sure, guys. Everybody, Video. the videos, the pictures, everything. I know you've heard about it. It's it was it was heartwarming. Like when they pushed him across, you know, pit row, and they were all there behind him. Bubba Wallace got out and immediately started crying. And the great Richard Petty went over there, gave him like a pat on the back, and was like, "Hey, man, we're here for you. We're here for you." 
And, like, he got up on his car, took a picture, posted it, and this is what solidarity looks like for NASCAR to come out with the FBI, with this bullshit. Like, come on, man. The world is moving in a direction. Don't let this bullshit go by. Somebody was yelling about uh, Smollett. They're like, oh, it's another Smollett incident. Uh, what's it called another small incident where he did it to himself and that's why they're doing so much shit about it. like nah bro come on who does that kind of shit right i don't know man i just uh, i mean what are they gonna do though really like well they they said let's just say who cares who cares when it came out right right there was last october whether it was october 2018 point is that it's there I'm saying, yeah, like, it's there. So now, what do we do? Why don't we fingerprint it? Why don't we try to figure it out? Figure out what's going on. Like, what are we gonna do with that? Like, yeah, yeah, I don't even care about the date. If this was a year, even, even if it was like a couple months ago. It's like, oh man, it, it was an accident. And I meant to. I don't even know what the hell you use nooses for, other than to what, you know, the extreme I could think of. You know, yeah. I, I really don't. like what I mean, what, I if, be... what if somebody did put out put that out there um in 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 october of last year what if that was a sign for a cry for help from somebody like trying uh, like thinking about killing themselves you've let right. that sit there since october nobody's walked into that fucking garage since october of last year like it just it sounds fishy to me man like it's just nascar should not be okay with that result I agree. There's no security camera, nothing. You tell me. They, they, uh, I forget the guy's name, but for ESPN, they got a NASCAR guy. Last night he was fucking yelling, and and it was it was it was intense. But today he was talking, or two days ago he was he was yelling. Yesterday that I watched it last night, and he was talking. And he was just like, I have all the credentials in the fucking world to cover this, and I can't get within 400 feet of the main gate. You mean to tell me that somebody who had all of the credentials to get wherever they wanted to go walked in there, saw this, walked away, and didn't say anything? You mean to tell me with all the fucking cameras that are back there, you can't go back, even if you have pit passes, you, there's, there's only so much secu- there's security there to stop you from going to certain places. Like, you have to have... Badge after badge after badge. He was explaining how every 15 to 20 feet, there's another stop. Every 15 to 20 feet, there's another camera, there's another security guard. You mean to tell me through all of this, nobody saw anything? Nobody caught anything? And this was here from October. Yeah, get the fuck out of here, bro. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It reminds me of the, the dude that hung himself in um, in jail. You know, the pedophile alert. Uh, oh. Epstein, Jeremy. Epstein Jeffrey. or whatever. Yeah, Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, right. Reminds I mean, me of that. Like, oh, I mean, yeah, I, was, the I cameras mean, were working at the. I mean, fuck I mean, that, puto. Happened. But right. still, yeah. I'm saying, like, it's one of those, like, oh, come on, come on, you're begging here. Where's my hat? Where's my hat? Yeah, get you get know? it out, dude. It's, it's it's getting ridiculous, guys. They're just again, just trying to hide stuff, and and uh, it's, it's just dumb. It's just part of society, you know. Um, you know, our goal is to change that, but how do we change what doesn't want to be changed? Right. You know. I'm, speaking of which, jumping into the NCAA football, Mississippi mm-hmm. State running back Kylan Hill states that he will not suit up for MSU if the Confederate battle flag is not changed, the Mississippi State flag, if it is not changed. Over the weekend, there has been a proposal floating among some of the um, Mississippi legislator to create a separate but equal flag option to keep the original but have a second one that is just as, as important to the uh, to Mississippi. But while this is well intentioned, any plan like this would would all this would all this would accomplish all that would accomplish is the exact opposite and would divide the state even more. I actually I had never I hadn't even thought about the uh, Mississippi flag. I pulled it up and I was like, holy shit! They have the fucking Confederate flag in the Mississippi flag, like uh, uh, that's what it flies. And there are people. I've been reading threads on both ends of this. Like, yeah, yeah, get rid of it, man. Why do we need it? Isn't that blah, blah, blah. And there are other people like, if you don't like it, get out my goddamn state. We don't need you. Mississippi Confederate flag. Yeah. Like, bro, you were four or five states who tried to to run the shit. You lost. 
get the fuck out of here, bro. Like, are you kidding me? Like, you're not even from... I, I mean, I'm not going to get into the whole you're not even from this country. Like, you <laughs> immigrated from Europe, yada, 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 whatever, bro. All but right. just that kind of backwards thinking needs to stop and be done with already. I, um, I agree, man. You know, I mean, changes need to happen somewhere. They need to start somewhere, and people aren't going to be happy with them, and the ones that aren't happy are usually the ones that we need to be looking at the most, you know? Absolutely. They're, they're, they're the ones that are at the root of the problem, I think, you know? There are two um, mock-ups for new flags for Mississippi, the one with the big old star right in the middle and the, and the three color. I mean, it looks great. I'm like, that should be the fucking flag. And to, to have people still, you know, uh, the meme, like we, we were talking about earlier, we're in a meme culture now, uh, but to have, like, GIFs and memes – where people are like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll teach my kids to hate you, too, if you don't like the Confederate flag. It's like, bitch, what? What? Like, come on. We all understand. It's, it's like if you're carrying um, uh, a flag with a swastika on it. At this point, that's what it's being compared to. All right. And it's just like, do you think Nazis are okay? No. So why the hell would you think this is okay? It's the, to me, it's the same shit, man. I don't, I don't know what you think, man. What do you think? I agree. I mean, but I mean, I'm also not from there, you know, so everything's different. Um, we're also at the same time, we're we're not privi- privileged, you know, we're on one end of the, the scale. Does that make sense? Here, okay, here, so here, here, let me let me interrupt you. There. Okay, so here's my thing. If tomorrow they told me that the Marine Corps flag was racist, and we had to change it to something else. I love my Marine Corps flag. I love my Eagle Globe and Anchor. EGA. I love that shit, dude. I bleed my Marine Corps, you know, red and, and, and gold and, and green. But if you told me that shit was racist and we had to change it, I would understand. I'd go to war for that motherfucker. I wouldn't let that thing touch the ground. But you're telling me that that is, that is offensive and this and that, yada, yada. And we need to get rid of it because it is detrimental to the future of our society. Let's change it up. Though. That's what I'm saying, though. Like, you understand racism. I don't think people that are racist really believe they're racist. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, I just, I honestly wholeheartedly believe that they don't believe they're racist. They're like, I'm not racist. I just like my Mississippi flag. Like, what's racist about that? <laughs> and I get it. Like, I'm with you. I'm like, what you mean? What's wrong with that? You don't see, you, you don't understand? Uh no. What what am I doing that's racist about that? Does that make sense? Like yeah, that's no. the way I think they see it. They're like I'm not racist. They are the people that that create that racism, you know, they it's it's you know one thing after another after another and before you know it like the bigger things don't feel like such a big form of racism because you've done so many other little things that lead up to the bigger things. Yeah, I got. I, I, I don't know. That's that. That I, honestly, that's just the only perspective I could think of that these these people or these other people or whatever you know, people from Mississippi are seeing it as. Because I'm with you. I'm like, hey, dude, if it's racist, I'm with you. Like, let's get rid of it. You know, let's get rid of it. Um, but I just don't. What what else? What other reasoning could it be? Unless they're really racist, they're like, so I don't care. That's that's your problem. It's not like a you problem, not a me problem. You know, I mean, it's I just, honestly believe that they don't they don't think they're racist or that it is racist because they don't know that they are racist. I'm with you there for to to, like, to an extent, because look, look, there was a, a Joe Rogan podcast. Um, shout out to Joe Rogan if you're listening. What's up, babe? Um, there was a Joe Rogan podcast where he had this African-American gentleman who was a um, a documentarian about racism down in the South. And this man went and had an interview with one of the high end, the higher end Klansmen or whatever. Right. They became friends. And the Klansman guy, he was like, I forget what they call him. The knight or the poobah, whatever the fuck they call him now. They're all pieces of shit anyways. But like, he ended up like giving up. Like he was like, I'm not, I can't do this anymore, man. Like we're friends. You're a great guy. Like I never knew a black man before. And I was taught that they're assholes. I'm paraphrasing. Um, but they're not. You're my, one of my best friends. 
and we hang out every week and we drink beers and, and eat and this and that. He's like, there's nothing wrong with you. And he ended up turning over his uniform or whatever you want to call it, the fucking the hood and shit. And the dude kept it as like trophies. He's like, now I go and start pulling these motherfuckers out. Like, okay, let's, let's just see how much of a racist you really are. Or are you just ignorant? Are you just dumb? You know what I mean? So it reminds you of that kind of stuff. Maybe you're right. Maybe they don't understand. Maybe they don't feel that they're racist. Maybe they don't feel that what they're doing is wrong. They're just supporting their flag. They're supporting their, their Mississippi flag. But they need to understand, I think, to an extent, there's a part of, it, there's a part of that flag that hurts other people. And I think that when they realize that, it's going to be okay when they swap it out for something else that still represents Mississippi or any of the southern states. I think that's going to be, I mean, a breakthrough. I think. I, I don't, I don't, yeah. I'm going to okay. jump off my soapbox on that one. Hey, I agree. I think there's there's going to be these battles. There's going to be a lot of these battles, dude. If we want things to change, these are all the battles that need to happen. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Got to win as many as we can. Got to win as many as we can. And this dude's staying, standing up and saying, you know, I'm not going to play for it. Um, you know, that's good for him. Kudos. I hope he could transfer uh, because I'm not sure if that actually plays out. I mean, he, he's one of the number one um, running backs in the in the nation right now. Well, I mean, so I'm sure there's going to be plenty of teams trying to get him into the uh, transfer portal yeah, to go pick sure. him up. Guaranteed. I mean, he's going like to play somewhere. He's gonna, He's going to play somewhere. Uh, it either it either happens and he stays, or it doesn't happen and he transfers out, and it makes just as big of a statement. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like one way, I feel like one way or the other, but he needs to stick with it. You know what I'm saying? Like the worst thing he could do is say this and then still play for them, even if they don't make a change. That's the worst thing that can happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What do you think on that? No, no, no. I'm I'm with you, man. I'm just. It's it's crazy what has happened in the last six months, right? With everything, with the COVID, with with all this uh, death and 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 us unnecessary. I mean, I guess it had to have been necessary because look at everything that's changing. I just hope that everything that's changing is permanent on the good end. You know what I mean? Um, I hope that everybody realizes everything that's going on to a certain extent. Like I told you before, tearing down statues and all this and all that. Okay, cool. Take them down, put them somewhere so that we can remember the mistakes from our past so that we do not repeat them. That's my biggest thing. Agreed. Um, shifting big gears. We're going to go ahead and grind it in the third gear right now. <laughs> going into the NBA um, and what's going on with them. Trevor Ariza will not report to the Portland Trailblazers when the season starts again. Um, but he's doing it for a good reason. Okay. Um, he is opting out due to a custody battle with his son's mother. I mean, I don't know if that's a good reason, but he's, he's doing it for his kid. He has a one month visitation window with this 12 year old son who he's trying to take custody of. And I get it, man. Hey, Trevor, I know who you are and what's going on and, and how hard you're working. And I know you want to be there for your guys. And I know this is way outside of when you would be playing. And I think nobody in the NBA is going to be upset because you're not going to be there. Take care of your family. Take care of your kids. You know what I mean? I totally agree. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. What teams he played for? Portland. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they're out of it anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does it. it <laughs> but at the yeah, same, you know, at the same time, like he's doing it for a good reason. Yeah, yeah. There, there he, are there are some players that are are staying out because other reasons yeah, but i, mean, they, I like think this I, is a noble one that they have you know? yeah i agree it's a noble one but it's kind of easy to be noble when when your team's not in it you know what i'm saying like <laughs> but what is it um uh, i lost the quote in my head but it's basically from the movie invincible mm-hmm. and it says uh his uh his wife his wife you know to dick vermeil tells him uh what is it you're always telling me he said uh adversity is really how a man acts when he's met with it and then she he says yeah but i i think he's being strong and this and this and that right like he's talking about um mark Wahlberg, the the invincible character and she's right. like i wasn't talking about him i was talking about you and he's like damn you got me, you got me right? <laughs> like that's one of these things like yeah 
it's yeah, I get what he's saying, but is it really that like impressive what he's doing or whatever? Is that really that noble? Uh, I mean, it's not. It is noble, but it's not that noble. You know, there's different levels. Yeah, but good for him. There's other dudes, you know, that that they're are, not. They don't even give a shit, and they don't even want to fight for their kids. Right. Exactly. So, so Demarcus Cousins is another dude that's talking about boogie. Out, but again, he's another dude in Kyrie's kind of level. Um. Mm. Well, Kyrie's hurt. Of course, he doesn't want to play. Of course, he doesn't want to come back. Type of thing, right? Cousins yeah. come back from that injury. Uh, I don't even know if he's healthy enough to still play or whatever, but I know he's come back from the injury, and he's talking about whether he's just going to sit out the rest of the year, which is, to me, the smartest thing for him to do. Why is he going to come back and rush it, you know, mm-hmm. when he's tore his AC, uh, not his ACL, his Achilles last year, right? Um, so he's talking about uh, coming back, rushing it to sign with the team or sitting out the rest of the year. Smart thing for him would be to let himself heal, let his body heal, and come back next year. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. And then there's the, and there's the other dude from the Wizards, the sharpshooter. I'm trying to get his name right now, um, but he's talking about he's not coming back um, um, to play uh, because basically he's he's in line for um, for a big contract. That kind so, of shit right there. Again, he's doing it for contract. contract yeah. You know, so his yeah. name is David David Bertans. He's he's opting out. To sit out the rest of the restart of the NBA season, but he's doing it for contract reasons because he had a real good year. Again, the Wizards are not in line to win the whole thing, right? Uh, so he's gonna sit out the rest of the year. He's coming into his big free agent year. Do you think that's gonna hurt him in free agency, knowing that? Yeah, you're not in line to win, but you still have the opportunity to go in there and compete. Do you think that hurts him in free agency, or do you think that that it's not going to matter because it's the 2020 season and they're going to call it a wash if people don't show up? Uh, I don't know. I think he's going to pigeonhole himself with a couple of teams. I could tell you, you know, the Wizards probably won't give him like a fat contract, so if he gets a contract, it's going to be somewhere else. And a lot of times, these other teams they don't care. You know, they're like. Oh, you did that over there? All right. I don't care. You know, they they don't concern themselves. And I'll give you an example. Like, okay, just something dumb. And I was talking about this with a, a friend the other day. Um, they they went after Manny Machado, the, the Padres, right? And they threw all this money out there at him, right? Right. And I don't hear, like, the greatest of things in terms of work ethic. This dude jogs two seconds, stuff like that. And I don't know if people remember... But Manny Machado basically ended uh, Dustin Pedroia's career. Like, he took him out with that dirty slide back when he was with Baltimore against Boston. And and Dustin Pedroia has not been back or been the same since. He's had to have surgery, and they're talking about, I think he's retiring. Like, he's going to retire because he's just struggling to get back. He he just can't regain the person he used to be, like his psychomotor skills or whatever it is. But, yeah, he still got paid with San Diego. Did, uh, does anybody remember any of those things, like how he dogs it going to first? Yeah, and, oh, I remember and, that because I was like, what a shithead. You know you're, what I'm you're such a great player, and you're going to dog it. Like, just because you got paid, you're like, eh, I'm not going to – I'm like, oh, that's that's going to be a, a, a grounder. That's an out. Like, I'm not going to run the first base. I'm just going to go ahead and jog it over there, take a couple – all right, I'm good. I'm going back to the, the dugout. Like, he doesn't care. Like, that is a bad mark on baseball, I think. Yeah. Do not learn well, from him, kids. I just think that, yeah, they're just going to be like, wow, well, it wasn't for my team, so I don't care, you know? Yeah, I don't think he's going to get a fat contract from the Wizards, but I think he, it's going to be like that, where, yeah, it's... Uh, Somebody's going to give him some money, but it great. won't be... Wizards. Won't, yeah. I do think someone's going to give him some money for sure. Right For on. sure. Um. There have been a couple other players that have been like, oh, I'm not going to show up. Let's not show up. We talked about it last week. Let's start our own league. I haven't heard anything else about that, about I mean, them starting their own league and stuff like that. So it, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next few weeks. I totally agree. About someone that's finally getting paid, huh? Oh, let's talk about somebody who's getting paid. Getting paid and getting paid. Now, what? What happened? 
Uh, Dak <laughs> finally signs his $31.4 million franchise tag. He will play next season on the tag uh, while they work out a long-term deal. Now, saying that, I have an update. Dak Prescott has signed a three-year, $123 million contract with the Cowboys, making him one of the NFL's highest-paid players. And the most money is, and almost all of that money is virtually guaranteed. Okay, so not, it's not technically true. Prescott is merely signing a one-year guaranteed franchise tender of $31.4 million. But if you know how that franchise tag works, and we talked about it a couple weeks ago, it may be well be a three-year deal, and that would equate to $123 million. And almost all of that is guaranteed when you're under the um, – the franchise tag. And if I may add, it's it's going to be interesting because Prescott only wants a four-year contract. He wants a shortened contract, whereas uh, Jerry, my boy Jerry Jones, wants to give him a long-term contract. He only wants a short-term four-year contract because he wants to have, be able to have another big payday at the end of four years. So it's going to be one of those things where he's he's playing, but he's trying to get paid at the same time still. And somebody said it very nicely. It's like going to have a really nice dinner. But it's with your in-laws that you don't really get along with very well. <laughs> uh. So it's going to be interesting. I'm glad he's getting he, he signed because then that's weight off my shoulders. At least right. he's there for the franchise, and we'll go there. Um, he's got three years. If they don't, if he doesn't sign, he's got the next three years to go off the franchise tag. He's going to make 123 million dollars, most of it guaranteed. I'm sure there's some pluses and 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 add-ons on there. But come on, Dak. Where else are you going to go? Where else are you going to get that money? Honestly, let's just fucking rock and roll. Let's go win a Super Bowl. That's all I'm saying. Let's go win a Super Bowl. Uh, I don't know about winning a Super Bowl. You're going to get past the first round with him first. I said let's go win a Super Bowl, and you don't take that away from me. <laughs> I can dream all I want, Artie. I can dream all I want. Yeah, yes, you can. Speaking of dreams, Jamal yeah. Adams <laughs> has got a big dream. He yeah. dr- he dream he's dreaming about playing in Dallas, baby. He was caught over the weekend. Um, video submitted by I think it was TMZ or ESPN or somebody submitted the video. Some fan saw him in his SUV and was like, "Hey, bro, come to play in Dallas." And he was like, "I'm trying." Um, so we see where he wants to go. Should he go there? Maybe, maybe not. Um, there was who. What is it? Uh, Undisputed this morning was talking with uh, Shannon Sharp and um, who's the other guy? El Uh, Skip Skip Bayless. Skip Bayless. And Skip, biggest Cowboy fan I know other than myself, um, was talking about. He was like, no, do not go get him. He's worth it. They're asking way too much money and way too many things for him. It's not worth it. You could have given that money and those picks to somebody else for some uh, for other better players. I don't know, man. I'm kind of half and half now after hearing him. I'm like, I mean, mm-hmm. Jamal Adams would definitely be an upgrade from what we have right now. But is there oh, issues there that we don't see that maybe let's let's just let him play one more year with the Jets and let's see where he goes. You know what I mean? Because yeah. he'll be a free agent at the end of the year. I think it's no, no. He's out this year and next year. So he's going to be a free agent for the next two, in, in two years. Let's just see where it goes from there. Make your money, man. Be the baddest motherfucker in the world and go make your money after the fact. King's ransom, right, is what they're always going to ask for when they got him under control. Damn right. Um, I mean, they should. They should. Uh, the Cowboys. I don't think the Cowboys' window is closing any time for a championship. I'll tell you that. I think they got a solid, you know, three- to five-year window here, um, depending, obviously, on what health, and stuff like that, and who they keep drafting, and all that good stuff. Yeah. And who they okay, I have Go something. Up. Something. Hold on. I, I'm sorry to interrupt you right there, man. I know you're mid um, thought there, but MLB, the Major League Players Association, it just came out across the wire, has agreed to play a 60 game season, reporting to camp July 1st. It is fucking official, baby. Baseball's back, baby. Woo! Nice. All right, I, I had to get that one out of my system. I know you can't yell right now because the boys are are. Uh, or asleep, but woo! one for Artie. And uh, <laughs> baseball's back, guys. It's official. July 1st, they're reporting to camp. July 26th, 27th, they will be um, playing their first official games. 
and we'll have to wait and see what this what the schedule is going to be like, what the season's going to look like, and uh, and yeah, okay, yeah. I'm sorry, man. I just had to say it. I had to yell. I had to be excited. I had to be excited, bro. I'm sorry. Yeah, it works for me. I'm happy. Happy again. I'm still curious to see the players' angles. They still have their angles too. I know. You know. You know. You know. In the next hour, you're gonna hear about players that who are not gonna show up. Right. But see, here's the other thing too, though. I think this is where the reinforcements are gonna come in. The minor leaguers. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of minor leaguers out there. Hey, take your time. Develop down there. And there's some dudes that are ready to play right now. They just need the at bats. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's part of the problem with bringing dudes up. They're like, man, well, we just problem is we don't have somewhere to really give them all these at bats. And I'll give you the example, just um, because you're such a base baseball angel nut, right? Like Joe the Adele. dude, Joe Adele, right? He's a dude that is he gonna make the roster? Is he not? He's good enough to make the roster. We all know that. Yeah. But is he ready to make the roster? Are they ready to just say, hey, we're going to run him out there every day, let him kind of, um, like, get learn, do the learning curve at the major league level, you know? Yeah. And I think they should for someone like him because look at what happened with Trout, right? They brought him up, balls, they sent him back down, and the next time he came back up, he never went back down. Rocking and Same. rolling from there. Yeah. So it's like uh, sometimes they try to coddle these dudes, you know, like yeah, not everybody's going to come up and just kill it and stay up there the whole time, you know? Yeah. And Trout's a perfect example. Like, but if, if you judge Trout based on his first run through in the majors and you're you're missing out on the big picture, yeah. you know, missing out on the big picture. And I think that is something that because even though I talk about, well, I'm curious to see how many dudes don't come back. I also, I'm also curious to see how many guys they say, all right, well. Fuck it, you can go, and let's bring this minor leaguer who we think is probably one year away from being ready, but you're going to get your shot this year, big guy. Let's go. Oh, we got 60 games to fucking prove it. Let's go. Right. Plus, I Honestly, there's is there going to be minor league baseball? Probably not. So if you, and A lot of those you guys got furloughed, and we probably won't see them. I know that the Minor League Players Association has filed a grievance lawsuit with the owners and major league baseball because they are not playing they get no money they got nothing they got they they there's not even a plan for them to actually play minor league ball so i know that came across earlier today i forgot to mention it earlier but um it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the next in the next week because july 1st is around the corner yeah but you didn't let me finish my thought oh my bad dude uh, I get you excited know, today, big guy, and so you made me lose my thought. But the <laughs> thing of the lines of they don't play a minor league season, dudes are missing, or let's say they're not missing. Let's say there's there's not any dudes that say, oh, you know, I'll be here this year. These dudes, these higher level guys, Joe Adele, right? Yeah, they're gonna miss out on a whole year minor league baseball. Now, do you bring them up and say, well, we can't not have you play for a year? So we're going to bring you up and push you a year ahead instead. Because Joe Dell, I, I don't know how far along he is. I, I know a little bit about him. I, I don't follow the the star minor leaguers that in depth, you know, unless they're like the superstar, the Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Right. type of thing. Um, but I do know the names, and I know they are among the best up there, right? So I think that this year is going to be a little different. I think they're going to call a lot of those, you know, Joe Adele's, Casey Mize, to come in and get their experience that they're missing out for this year that they would have gotten the minors at the major league level. Um, are they going to get B starters? I think they're going to be like kind of like uh, utility type of players, utility roles. And if like an injury happens or they happen to get hot in that utility role, then they become starters. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so I'm very curious to see that aspect of it. It's It definitely is going to be in, an interesting um... – next few months just to see how everything plays off so uh, i'm just happy that fucking uh baseball is back sir i mean that's the the biggest thing to me baseball is absolutely taken care of according to mlbpa all remaining issues have been resolved and players are reporting to training camps so i am super stoked for that baseball is officially back everybody take a second Soak it all in. Baseball's back. <laughs> um, going back to to Jamal Adams and all that. Um, 
I think he's staying a Jet this year. I think he's staying a Jet next year, and I think he's going to hit free agency. And I don't think the Jets are going to be the ones that pays him. I think if anybody goes and pays out for him or trades for him, they're going to pay a King's Ransom like you said. Um, but I don't think if you pay the King's Ransom, I don't think it's going to be worth it. Mark my words. I don't think it's worth it. I agree. I uh, I would just say uh, just don't know what the team chemistry as well, too. Yeah. He may be poisoned in the locker room. Who knows? We don't know. You don't know. We'll have to wait and see what happens in the next year or so. Um, getting towards the end here, the documentary The Kid premiered over the weekend. And also, you finally got to see The Long Summer. Um, I know that you missed the premiere of The Kid. I got to watch it on DVR because I was working. Um, it was absolutely wonderful already. I still have it saved on my DVR, so if you make it out here, we'll watch it again. Absolutely wonderful. Just reminds us how amazing and great Ken Griffey Jr. was. Or is. Um, but let's talk about The Long Summer, since we both have seen that one. What? It's I think I might have labeled it wrong. What happened? What's it called? Long Gone Summer. Long Gone. I was like, yeah, it's The Long Gone Summer. I'm a, I know what you're talking about. The, the fans listening to us know what you're talking about already. We're all right. <laughs> the Long Gone Summer. You finally got to see it. Um, one thing I need to bring up that bothered me during that whole situation Sammy Sosa, what did you do yourself? I'm sorry. Sammy, what did you do yourself? You look completely different. And, I mean, if you feel happy, then fuck it, dude. It is what it is. Um, What was your favorite part of the Long Gone Summer, Artie? Actually, do you think he looked as bad as, as I expected him, as pictures I've seen him look? You, you thought he was like... You thought he looked ridiculously bad? I, I, mean, I didn't think no, 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 I, no, no, no. I didn't think he looked ridiculously bad. There, I've seen some pictures where he looks ridiculously yeah, bad. That's what I was expecting to see. And then when I saw this, I said, oh. He didn't look, he didn't look great. He didn't look good. Right. But, I mean, to each their own. Hey, yes, that tu sabes, carnal. But. Yeah. At, he's also not playing every day, so he's not out in the sun as much anymore, right? No. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to find some kind of excuse. Cause he doesn't look as bad as other ones I've seen before, you know? Yeah, no, I've seen this man um, look pink. I was just like, oh, okay. Yeah, I know. I, I had two, and I was just like, oh, okay. Look as bad as I thought he was going to look. Uh, other than that, I thought it was cool, man. He still, Sammy still has that uh, that charisma. Yeah, he's very charismatic. Oh, I have to give you that 110%. I thought it was cool when they were talking about it. Um, um he mark. I don't think McGuire hits breaks that record if he doesn't have some Sammy with him. Um, because it seemed like to be really wearing on him. You know, it seemed like they kept drawing back to the the Roger Maris comparisons, and Roger Maris, remember for a minute, had Mickey Mantle with him chasing that record, and then Mickey Mantle, you know, got sick, got hurt, whatever it was, and he was done, and um, he uh he couldn't he couldn't uh. He he started losing his hair, started stressing out, you know, all that stuff. And it just seems like because he had Sammy Sosa going and battling him back and forth, it pushed him to break that record and soar above it. Because, you know, he hit 70, right? What was it, 70, 72? 70, 70. 70, right? Like, he ended up hitting 70, dude. And that's crazy to think of that number. If he doesn't have Sammy. Yeah, if he doesn't have know, Sammy, you're right. I don't think he does I, that. He maybe breaks it by a hair or two, you know, because he was just having a damn good year, obviously. But I don't think he hit 70 because uh, of Sam. Um, so I found that really interesting. It almost seemed like he was relieved on those those um, conferences when Sammy was there with him because he was just like, like it looked like he could breathe and he could enjoy the moment. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. As opposed to all the other times when reporters and it was just him being isolated. Looked like he was suffocating, poor guy. Like, like man, I, I can't even breathe. And he mentioned, he said, he he said in a quote that he felt like a caged animal, right? Mm -hmm. And then the media got on him about that and stuff like that. Uh, but it really did look like it. And I remember thinking all that because Sammy always just took it with a smile, like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm going after the record. Yeah, we're going after it. You know, like no big deal. Yeah, that's what we're supposed to do. You know, if you're having a good year, blah blah blah. blah you know, like, I thought that was cool. That that little. And then also, too, I didn't realize Mark McGuire didn't even know who Sammy Sosa was, dude. Yeah, like, that, that was dude. wild to me. Like, I, you're, 
You're going to tell me the guy that's popping fucking home runs left and right. He's like, I didn't know he was until this became a race. All of a sudden, I knew who Sammy was. It's like, bro, how do you not know this motherfucker? I'm he's surprised, especially they're in the same division. He's plastering. I know. It, oh, my God, right? They are in the same division. He's plastering home runs up against the fucking walls over there. And you're not going to know who this motherfucker is? I'm like, yeah, get back. I think he means in, he wasn't plastering home runs until that year. Oh, that's not to say he didn't have other good years. Uh, I mean, he had a 30-30 season before this ever happened, you know? Mm-hmm. Sammy Sosa did. It was like, you don't know a dude that had a 30-30 run season? Like, because they're, they're rare. They, they don't happen very often, 30-30s, you know? So, like, you don't know who that is? Um, I don't know, you know? Like, that, that to me was really strange. But the reason all this started, too, that that triggered all this is because they made references uh, to King Griffey Jr. throughout this, you know, uh-huh. how they thought he's going to be the dude and stuff like that. Yeah, they were that, like, yeah, he was the you. chosen one. They were like, oh, Griffey's going to be the chosen one. And then he got yeah. hurt. And got then, hurt. yeah. It always seemed like when Griffey had a shot, something would happen, you know? Yeah. I mean, he had, what, 58 home runs still, though, right? Yeah, he was right there, man. After he came back from that injury, man, he came back and he was right. 58, man. 58, yeah. three away. Like, imagine had he not gotten hurt and be gone for those, I think it was like 15, 20 games, something like that. Um, you have to imagine that he had to have been over 61, at least beating Roger Maris's record, and at least in the mix with these guys. Because you don't think that he's going to be getting pushed and grinding out those extra home runs because these guys are fighting right there too? Uh, I think, man. But he had back-to-back years with 56. I, I thought it was 58, but it's 56 mm-hmm. home runs. Still, 56. 56 is a lot, bro. You're saying Trout can't even hit 50, so we're getting there. We're getting there. Right. <laughs> yeah. And that was another thing. I, I thought I saw some uh, little things after uh, Griffey's uh, video came out and stuff like that mm-hmm. on Sunday, and they were talking about how, um, like, if you think Griffey is better than Trout, then you don't know baseball, right? And while I'm not saying Griffey's better than Trout, I'm just saying at some in some ways – Trout is not even at Griffey's level. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Now, here's why. Here. And, and again, this, and this by the way, way, everybody listening, if it's the first time you're listening to the, the Blown State Podcast, understand I am the biggest Trout fan and 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 uh, enthusiast out there. But go ahead, Artie. Go ahead. So here, here's my thing, right? Well, first is some baselines, right? Trout's never hit 50 home runs. And I've told you, I don't think he'll ever will. Uh, I thought this year was a good year, a good shot at him hitting 50. But Trout reminds me in some ways of Griffey where, like, he just seems to kind of something goes wrong or he gets hurt in that year that he could have 50 home runs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, something happens. Uh, I'm not saying he Trout can't. But by no means. I, I, I think he can. I just don't think he will. And there's a difference. Um, but Griffey has two 50 home run seasons under his belt. How many, how many uh, 40 home run seasons does Trout have under his belt? Two, maybe? I want to say two. I think three, but I want to say two. Uh, I'm going to look real quick. I want to say, I, I, I'm i pretty sure it's not three. I, I'd be almost willing to bet that's not three. But I, I want to say it's two, two, maybe three. Go He's, ahead. Or, yeah, like I said, not even. Yeah, well, I guess not. He was close. 41 and then he had 30 uh no he had two 35 and then 41 okay and i guess my close he had 39 another year okay. so then so and i'm just throwing some numbers out there right then trout and everybody's like oh but he hit here and you can have a do whatever the excuses is whatever the reasoning the point is he doesn't have the numbers right right okay trout has broken the 100 rbi plateau three times he was close ish another one 97 mm-hmm. and then 90 and the other ones were not really that close right so and if he broke the 100 rbi plateau one two three four five six seven eight 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 different times you know and then was close two other times that, that's again i i like i said in some ways but then at the same time griffey never hit more than Looks like 327 was his career high. And off the top of my head, I know Trout was 340s one time for sure. Uh, oh, no. I'm wrong with that. He was at three. Oh, he never won a batting title? Trout never won a batting title? 
Trout has never won a batting title. Trout has won a bunch of silver sluggers, but not a batting title. Yeah, yeah, that's not what I asked. I, I shut up. I know what you're asked. Like, is like asking, hey, did he ever win a home run title? No, but he won a whole bunch of stolen base titles. Shut the fuck yeah, up. <laughs> oh, um, I was surprised. I thought he had 340. His his career high is 326. So there you go. So then Griffey hasn't even touched. Um, I'm sorry, Griffey has a higher single season career batting average than, right. than Trout ever had, uh, which again to me is surprising. It's by one, but still a little surprising. Yeah, uh, three. Let's see here, three two eighty five for Griffey and three oh five, which is expected for Trout. Again, he's still not towards the tail end of his career where he's going to get a lot of lower batting average seasons, and that numbers those numbers should probably even out, get a little closer. I think, in my opinion. Yeah, because I mean that's what happened with Griffey. That's what happens with all of them. You know, they're they don't get better as they get older. You know, not not all the way through the end of their careers. Not with batting average for sure. You know. Yeah. Um, but then you know, look at look at Trout's on base percentage. That's ridiculous. Slugging percentage. Well, again, slugging is not as high as Griffey's. Oh, wait, is it the other round? Uh, no, uh, Trout's is higher. OPS. Trout's is higher. Again, war so is cr- definitely higher on Trout's side. Uh, is it really? The war? Yeah, war is definitely higher on Trout's side. Let's see here, where are you seeing that at? Oh, I'm not looking. I'm just letting you know he has the highest war of any other player through the years that he's in right now. Oh, again, through the years he's in. Oh, that, that let's let's up. let's finish let's finish the let's finish his career and then we'll go from there i mean if yeah. you want to get you want to get fucking crazy right now trout has oh, uh, I see the, trout, the wars here here you go let's see offensive wars yeah man uh 84s and 2.2s and seven yeah dude uh still I, rocking I a three where, mvp I, I and a, i don't i don't see where you're seeing that he has a better number than griffey he just through the years they've played. Through the through the, the war? Through, through the years they've played war. Yeah, that's again through the years they played. What's that got to do with it? We're talking about like the whole overall thing. Trout's war is gonna get worse, dude. That, that's not a good argument through the years he's played. I said right now. No, that that's not a good argument. Right now it is because it's higher. It's not. Even <laughs> that, it's not higher. His his war right now is not higher than Griffey's career war. Let's see here. What's Ken Griffey's war? Griffey's is at 83.8 through 22 seasons. Out through nine seasons is at 72.8. Explain to me how right now through right now is better than even a career. Like, it's not. Does that make sense? Like, it's not. It's not. He's not going to get better a higher war. It's only going to get, well, he might get a little bit better, and then it's going to scale down. So you're talking about he's he's a full 10 points behind. Yeah, but he's not going to catch up to him. <laughs> he's got the MVPs. You also have to remember, again, like MVPs are popularity votes. You know what I'm saying? And that's like saying, well, okay, Griffey has all these uh, gold gloves, right? And how many gold gloves does Trout have again? Like none, right? We have absolutely again, zero go gloves. And again, they he doesn't. Well, he's gonna get one. I think he's gonna get one because I think people are making a big deal about it. How he doesn't have one, mm-hmm. and I think he deserves one. Don't get me wrong. Oh, but absolutely. You, I Griffey. think he deserves one. Yeah, I think he deserves one. But if we take Trout and Griffey for just defensive purposes, mm-hmm. like even just that in, I'm taking Griffey all day and twice on Sunday. I got. Trout. I'll tell you this right now. I would take Griffey over Trout. Absolutely. You know, like that. But, you know, it's pretty cool. So, like, you're talking about uh, Silver Sluggers. Trout already had seven. Griffey had. Did you, did you know Did seven. you know this very fun fact? So, when they had the players' jerseys, right, on Trout, it said kid with three eyes. Do you know why? Because it was Ken Griffey Sr., Jr., and he's been referred to as the kid, the third iteration. That's why he went with kid with three eyes. Fun fact. Boom. What's up? Respect him. Like it. Like it. He does remind me of like the right-handed King Griffey Jr. Oh, dude, his swing is so just short, concise, and just boom. I was looking at that shit. I'm like, oh, fucking Luke is gonna have that fucking swing. I swear to. God. Well, not that swing, but he's gonna have his own smooth ass fucking swing. Go on to town. I think about that about their kids, but I mean, these guys are legends for a reason, you know? Let me have this. <laughs> <laughs> just, 
just want to make sure you, you stay a little grounded. <laughs> I have all hey, I have my feet are um, on the ground. Planted. He has probably hands down the sweetest swing in baseball. Oh, absolutely. The most in, when when you get to watch the uh, the junior uh, documentary, you're gonna see. I mean, it's they just show it over and over and over and over and over again, and it's absolutely one of the most beautiful, almost effortless swings that has ever stroked the uh, the baseball diamond. I don't think it's one of the. I think it's the. I think you know what I mean. I can't think of. You no, know, I, I like trout swing, but I still don't think it's the best right-handed swing I've seen. Um, personally, I always liked Manny Ramirez's uh, right-handed swing. Manny's was more violent to me, and he had a great follow-through and, and an exciting um, bat throwaway. <laughs> but I think I think he was more vi- like oh like. Um, Who's the one? Uh, the he's the Phillies. He was in the Washington Nationals. Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper has a very violent swing. He has one. That's why I would disagree with Manny having a violent one because Manny had a smooth stroke. Like, it it was smooth. He didn't have a short stroke like Trout does. Okay, um, maybe I'll give you that. Okay, okay, I'll give you that one. I'll, I will short concede stroke that I could think of is like uh, someone compared to to Trout that I could think of a right-handed is uh, Hanley Ramirez when he was with. Um, when he was with uh, uh, the Marlins, not when he was with the Dodgers or Red Sox, because he had more of, of uh, Manny Ramirez's stroke by then. Right. But when he was with Florida, he had a similar, more similar stroke to uh, another dude that had, believe it or not, had a similar stroke to Trout with that shortness is uh, Pudge Rodriguez. And if you think about it, they have that same kind of stature. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Which had a very similar stroke to, to um, Trout. Again, they're different strokes, but my favorite – for sure, I personally, even though I think Hanley's was similar to Manny's, was Manny's. He's, for me, my favorite right-handed swing because he seemed to just get his hands through the ball on every pitch, and it just seemed smooth, like smooth. You know, it's, it felt like, in some ways, a, a right-handed version of Griffey yeah. uh, without the finish. Griffey had that style. Oh, he had, that, finish, you know he had that swag, the style, oh. the charisma. Griffey, man... I think I think LeBron put it best. You know how he said, "If you made it cool to be to play baseball, you know." Oh, absolutely, absolutely, man. Griffey yeah, made it cool to play baseball again, and I know that we talk about McGuire and Sosa saving baseball and bringing people back to baseball, but man, did Ken Griffey Jr. make it cool to play baseball again? Sure did, sure did, and that's again, that's honestly, I that's how I feel about Trout. Like when people see him or when I see him. He makes baseball look easy, and he makes it look fun, and he makes it look, like, cool. He looks like he's having fun out there. How many baseball players? Really, I mean, I see Kike Hernandez from the Dodgers. He's not the greatest mm-hmm. Dodger. Owner. He's, he's a solid role player for us. That dude looks like he's having fun. Out when he's playing, dude, like, he looks like he's having fun, you know? Yeah. Like, there's only a handful of guys that really look like they're having fun out there when they're playing ball, you know? Absolutely, I, man. I really like seeing those dudes. I really, really do. Maybe I'm not. Maybe it's just because they're two local guys. Like Bellinger is good at it, but he doesn't always look like he's having fun. You know, like he looks like he's having fun when he's doing good. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> Kike isn't sure. always. Does that make sense? Like Kike isn't always doing good, and that dude looks like he's having fun all the time. Like always, you know. That remi- um, it reminds me right now of that movie, and I know we said we're going to talk about it, but we're going to do that probably next week, our top ten movies. Um, but the 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 one where it, he's the he was a player, he became a coach, and the kids won the state champion or went to the state championship, uh, so he had to go try oh, out and he played for the Marlins. Oh, oh, the rookie. Yeah, the rookie. There you go. Where they're like, guess what we get to do today? We get to play baseball. I like that. It's like, oh, I feel like that is the essence of Trout the entire time he's playing baseball. Like, come on, guys. Guess what we get to do today? We get to play baseball. Uh, he, I agree. I, I think. And I think it's because, I mean, it is a little easier when you're that damn good yeah. to want to go out there all the time. That dude's not that good by accident. You know what I'm saying? Not like oh, that. Oh, no. He works hard. And, he works yeah, hard. He works, he works hard. He's. he's how they. Um, What's the name? James again. LeBron James says all the great ones work when nobody's looking. You know, oh, yeah. like Trout is his work that he puts in. It's not in front of us, in front of all oh, batting practice. You know, early this and that. It's all the stuff he does at home or you know in behind closed doors stuff like that. That's what makes him great. He's not again. It's not by accident that this dude does that good. You know. Yeah. 
I'm with Please. you there, man. So, anyways, that's a great, great note. And writing makes baseball. Seeing Griffey and that documentary come out is like to me, it's the perfect time again for because it got us excited about baseball, and then baseball is like officially back. You know? Yeah, absolutely. All right, man. I don't, I don't, I don't see any other place we could stop but here, and say thank God baseball's back. I'm happy. You're happy. The world's happy. Baseball's coming back. There are obviously other things going on in the world that we have to keep an eye on. You know what I mean? But right now, it's a good thing. Baseball's back, and we got a little glimpse of Junior and and talking about Trout. And we're, we'll see where the league takes us in the, in the next 60 games that come up starting July 1st, that that, that uh, spring training, the pseudo spring training. But uh, it's always a pleasure. Never try, Mr. Artie. Let's hear your, uh, so your send-off, sir. All right. Hey, let's not forget. Wash our hands and be safe out there. There's still stuff going on, and there's a lot of uncertainty. If you're going to the river or stuff like that, and you're going to be outdoors <laughs> with other people and you uh, care, like some Brents, uh, then just be safe. Be safe. But- <laughs> I'll definitely be safe on my end, sir. We'll definitely make sure we're taking care of each other and we're not going out there dealing with other people. But uh, for all you guys listening, uh, make sure you don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow us. Make sure you share us and shout it out to everybody in the world. Hey, you guys need to listen to the Blown Save Podcast. These guys are hilarious. You guys are having a good time. And hey, if you did follow along with us and have a couple drinks, make sure you guys drive safely. We don't want anybody getting in trouble or anybody getting hurt or anything like that. We want you guys to come back for our next podcast. Um, shout out to everybody following us in Marina Valley, El Segundo, La Puente, Los Angeles, Beaumont. Riverside, uh, all those uh, wonderful cities here in Southern California. We love you guys. Thank you so much. Big shout out to Frisco, Irving, and McKinley, Texas. What's up, Big Texas? Uh, thanks, you guys, for all the love. Shout out to the Sin City itself, Mrs. Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, not Las Vegas, n- um, New Mexico. I don't know how many people go over there. But, hey, if you guys want to listen to go ahead and go for it. And to everyone around the world listening to us, especially in India, France, Pakistan, and Portugal, thank you guys for listening to us. We really appreciate it. We don't know how you found us. We don't care how you found us. All we care is that you continue to listen to us. And everybody else that's on a proxy server listening to us, incognito, you don't want everybody to know, hey, man, let them know. You're listening to the Blown State Podcast. We love you guys. You guys ever have a great fucking week we'll see you guys next friday we got some interesting things happening just uh be safe be interesting and uh we love you guys baseball's back baby Woo!